Nine Big Five Fifty KTRS. One of the reasons why you did not vote on whether or not to legalize uh, was it medical marijuana? Yes, it was medical marijuana was because yours truly. Well, they were they fell eighteen signatures short. One of those signatures was mine. Because I signed the wrong petition. I signed the one for St. Louis County when I live in St. Charles County. So they threw my name off of the ballot, and they came 18 signatures short. So I apologize. But the reason why we're talking about it is because there are a group of veterans that are coming out publicly in favor of legalizing medical marijuana because they're finding that medical marijuana has great... Um, uh, effects on veterans who are coming back suffering from PTSD. To talk about it, Blake Bell, Executive Director of St. Louis Normal. Blake, welcome to Big 550 KTRS. Thank you. Appreciate you having me on. And Thomas Mundell. Uh, Thomas, you've been on the show before. You're an Army veteran. Welcome back to Big 550 KTRS. Thank you very much. I really appreciate being here. You were, uh, you are a veteran. Uh, Vietnam, can I say? Army, all the way. Uh, quite a few years after Vietnam also. And... Um, you have been a uh, advocate for all sorts of veterans' um, issues going forward, right? Yes, sir. I was the past state commander for the VFW. And you, you, you've been on the show numerous times talking yes, about sir. veterans' issues. Yes, sir. Uh, you said off the air that you have now seen such great benefits of medical marijuana for veterans that you're advocating legalizing it so that it can fight PTSD. Certainly, and a lot of other uh, physical as well as um, psychological uh, issues that... Everyone has, right. and uh, for 30, the last 37 months, after a lot of uh, catastrophic issues that I was faced with myself, I started my journey of trying to investigate this. And the reason being was because as state commander, as I was coming up, I was focusing my attentions toward c catastrophically injured veterans. Mm -hmm. And for, the, for quite a few years as, as we were coming up, uh, they were doing okay, but all of a sudden, their minds, their bodies. Um, Are these their, older veterans, younger veterans, younger, veterans just just all, coming young, back, people yes, from Vietnam? Yes, uh, all of all, everybody. All, everybody, but hmm. these younger veterans, thanks to medical science, they're able to keep these um, military combatants alive. Mm -hmm. And uh, but then they have to survive and actually live with their conditions. Physically, they can survive. Yes, but mentally, you're saying they're still having the issues. And that that we didn't know about because many of these veterans didn't didn't live this long. Right. A picture this in your mind: um, a young lady, a beautiful face, long hair, um, a, a tremendous individual, very intelligent. All of a sudden, now they're physically from the breast down shredded unable to do anything for themselves and for seven eight nine years they were able to keep their psyche together and keep that smile on their face but suddenly they started falling apart mm -hmm. well i was with these people for all those years watching them do so well then i saw them degradate and i saw them going down and we were having so many people attempting suicide and then the suicide rate went I mean, it just blew up right. out of the way. And one day, I had just walked out. I couldn't stand it anymore. Uh, I, I'm a man enough to fight a war. Uh, I can kick a door in. I, I, I can fly, uh, att attack helicopters. I can do a lot of things. But dealing with a lot of these personal issues, I was just unable to do it. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the parents came to me one day. And uh, after about 10 months, I was away from it as state commander for Missouri for the Veterans of Foreign Wars. And um, she came to me and said, I've got a meeting for you to go to in the morning. I'm going to pick you up. But I want you to go with me to this meeting uh, to meet some parents. And you have to promise me once i got in the car the next morning she goes i want you to promise me that you will not tell if you disagree with what we're doing mm -hmm. we i want you to please turn around walk out and don't tell the authorities what we're doing and i hate to say this but i thought she was taking me to a meeting god forbid to uh, to support euthanasia mm -hmm. i know that sounds terrible but that's right. what i was thought i was going that, into. that was the fear she put into you yes yeah. and i was shaking all the way down there and i got to the house and i noticed all the cars there and i walked in and usually when you walk in these homes they everybody's sad especially the parents are just tore apart because right. of the condition their families are in i walk in in this house it's normally blue lighting very low lighting everybody's very quiet to hear laughter and I've never seen smiles on any of these people's faces. And I walk in, these people are happy, they're talking, and they, they had me look at um, iPad 
stories from their family members saying, please, we need your help. We need your support. So this is a room full of veterans who are having all sorts of issues. They're PT. family members. They're family they're members. Family, family members right. who are having uh, issues. Yes, big issues. And they turn to marijuana. Well, that's what I finally found out. They, um, I saw th they had told me their stories. They had reduced their pill intake by se over 70% across the board. Uh, th th they were coping with their injuries. Suddenly, um, they're writing books. They got friends. Uh, they want to start a life instead of existing in hell. Now they're living. Mm -hmm. And I said, what made these changes? And they said, to be perfectly honest, we went to Colorado. We went to Oregon. We went to California, um, uh, you know, Alaska, mm -hmm. all the different states that was legal. And we got therapy on, on cannabis and CBDs and uh, oils and edibles. And it changed our lives. And they were able to actually reduce themselves off of their painkillers and their antipsychotic and antidepressants. So you went from being very anti-medical marijuana to very pro-medical marijuana? I wasn't either way before. I didn't even think about, part, uh, about it. It wasn't part of my life. And uh, Warrior and uh, the military, yeah. it's not there. Any studies done to, yes. to prove this? Yes. Um, I, it's 37 months ago. I started by going straight into Colorado. I'm meeting with all the professionals, the doctors, the scientists, Dr. Sue Sicily. Um, uh, Mr. Steve D'Angelo, there's so many people in California and Colorado, and there's been so much science done on it. And Dr. Sisley has, uh, should be coming to St. Louis soon uh, for a, 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 an educational uh, program we're going to have here for Missourians. And um, I found out from my studies for the last 37 months, including losing my only son and a daughter and their mother, all because they drank on their meds, because I guess I was just a bad husband, a, a worse father. I, I just couldn't to tolerate certain things, and I didn't understand what they were going through, mm. because my head was stuck in the military. Right. And um, uh, they eventually all drank on their meds, and one day I found my son dead, laying beside the house, uh, because he had drank just a little bit of vodka on top of his meds, and the coroner told me what took him out was he had drank alcohol on top of his prescribed medications, and there was no cannabis in his system whatsoever. And you're thinking that if the, if people were allowed, doctors were allowed to prescribe no, marijuana. We, uh, to recommend. To recommend marijuana. Re their recommendations. They don't prescribe it. <sighs> they just recommend that. That's you think it's a better way, safer way. There's no question about to it. To treating uh, some of these ailments. I, I've seen miraculous things. Veterans going from 20, 30, 50 and more pills a day uh, down to nearly no pills. They, they lose weight. Uh, one veteran lost 47 pounds. Um, he's doing very well. He's not on any, any pills whatsoever they now. Have, they have regained their life. Is They've what you're regained saying. their life. But the problem is the ones in Missouri, they can't, they can't stay that way. Or they're they breaking have, the law. They're, they're breaking right. the law. And these are warriors. They they believe in our country and our laws. Blake Bell with us, Executive Director of St. Louis Normal. What do you think when you hear something like this? It moves me. I need you to talk yeah. right in the microphone. Oh, sorry, I'll bring a little closer here. It, uh, it moves me. Um, that's, it's, it's such a strong story. It, it works. And veterans are telling us it works. Why aren't we listening? Right. So after we came so close to, to getting it on the ballot for November of, of 2016, um, it, it really it struck home that we need to educate some people some more on what's going on, why we're trying to legalize cannabis. I call it cannabis instead of marijuana. Right. Um, the reason for that is it works. It, it is medicine, and it should be treated that way. So what we're going to do is I said, okay, we got veterans. We have an epidemic. So number one, let's, let's address the epidemic. We're losing 22 veterans a day, and that number itself is low. That comes from the VA. The VA itself didn't include the entire state of California in that report. The most populated state right. in America is not included in the VA report saying 22 veterans a day kill themselves. Right. Um, if you overdose on your medications, as Tom's sons did, that's not included in the reports. So you have a very, very large number of veterans. We're losing every single day. Every 65 minutes by the, by the government standards, right. we're losing a veteran. So what we're going to do is we're going to take 22 veterans from Missouri into Colorado to a Canvas Research Conference. It's the inaugural Canvas Research Conference held at Pueblo University. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna sit down and talk with doctors, scientists, researchers, and say, okay, we know what works, tell us why. 
tell us how. Explain to us so that we can go back and explain to people in Missouri why it works in Colorado and why we should do it back in Missouri, because it is saving lives. Are you saying legalizing medical marijuana or the effects of marijuana having on some of these soldiers? Well, you have to legalize it in order to get these effects for these soldiers. I mean, there's guys here in Missouri that are doing it right now. Mm -hmm. They're just doing it e e They're doing illegally. it legally. Right. And if they get caught by the VA, if they pee dirty, their benefits are gone. So we're, we're forcing people who fought for our country to break the law to get the medicine they think helps them. Correct. And you're talking, I'm talking, when, when Tom's talking about these people, you're talking completely, I mean, no arms, no legs, catastrophically catastrophically injured mm -hmm. and cannabis has completely turned their life around why would we not look at that and say hey this is an option we're or, losing 22 veterans right. a day. It's, but, we need to do something but but not only that we don't allow them marijuana but we'll give them harder more harmful drugs right that, now that's the that's a big <laughs> issue um uh, I know veterans that have that are taking um, hydrocodone, oxycodone. We'll give them medical grade heroin, right? Yes. Medical grade heroin, but we won't give them cannabis. It's safer cannabis. cannabis. And and why are we giving them medical grade heroin for PTSD? And and even these psychotics, the antipsychotics, and antidepressants that they're giving them, um, you become numb. Um, I have to admit this, and I and I hate to say this, but I was at my own only son's funeral, and I was so numb. I, I, I didn't even shed a tear at that. I, I, I stared down, I shook the hands, I looked at people, I looked at my son, I, I looked at my family. Um, I didn't even know what, it was just terrible. Right. And um, once I got out and, and just started changing my life and got away from all these narcotics that I was on, and these are prescribed narcotics, and, and I'm not faulting the v Veterans Administration because they've saved my life. They mm -hmm. brought me back numerous times. I love the VA. They don't have any other options. They're doing the best that they can. So We've once got you the got most away tremendous from medical those, system. Once you got away from those drugs, you were able to clear your mind yes. and find out what was going on. You know, it's not just veterans. No, it's but, but, every, but whole, football players. Absolutely. Are saying, hey, wait a minute here. You are loading me up with these painkillers, and I would much rather just have some, have a brownie, have a joint, have a bong, or something else. That's much more relaxing. It's beneficial to my body. It's a pain reliever, and I'm not numb after taking all these medications. And it's a neuroprotectant. Why is the NFL not researching this? They said they would, but then they pulled their funding. But why aren't they researching this as a neuroprotectant? You've got guys um, like Brian Schaefering here in St. Louis. I've, I've met him. I've talked with him. He has brain damage from playing football. If he had been smoking cannabis or other things, he may not be as bad because it is a neuroprotectant. They've shown. Dr. Lester Greensprung of Harvard has done studies and said, hey, if I was playing football 20 minutes before every practice, not just every game, every practice, I would be smoking CBD. And then 20 minutes after what every practice, CBD? it's cannabidiol. What so what do you have it's is from the hemp plant. It's yeah. So on, on the, the cannabis plant, you have over 100 cannabinoids. THC is one of them. Okay, CBD is another one. It's not, it doesn't cause any of the effects that THC does. It's not psychoactive, but it is a neuroprotectant. It works with the immune system. Um, it, it's legal to Balances buy. Balances the body. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it, it's actually, your body has an endocannabinoid system. People don't know this. I ask your doctor next time you see him, hey, doc, what do you know about my endocannabinoid system? Well, no one's going to ask that because no one can say that word. But, <laughs> <laughs> is, there a, but, is there an easier way to ask that question to the doctor? I have to but, keep it on a card. <laughs> but it, it works with your immune system. It's the second densest receptor in your brain is CB receptor 1, cannabinoid receptor 1. It's the second densest receptor in your brain, and we're not studying this. So what we're going to do is we want to go to Colorado and talk to the doctors, like Dr. Sue Sisley, Dr. Raphael Mashulam, who actually discovered THC, who do discovered is the it? endocannabinoid system. System. Yes, I'm from uh, Israel's done the most research on it in the whole world. Yeah, and they're going to be there explaining what it does. What's this trivia night you got going on? Do you want me to plug this trivia night for you? Yeah, please. Well, there's two things I want to plug. Number one, we need more veterans to sign up and apply to come with us. Uh, we're looking for so people. you're looking for veterans to to have this study done. Correct. We're okay. looking for commanders, people that we can really educate that can then explain to everybody in their post and so on and so forth what we're doing. Um, so if you're a veteran, please visit us at Project Twenty Two Project Dash Twenty Two yes. Project Dash 22.org okay and and you can apply right there online and then we have a trivia night this saturday to fund this and it's at the vfw hall 3944 it's right at midland and Lindbergh 
in Overland. Sure. So the VFW Post 3944 is having a trivia night to help fund a research project for veterans to find out the effects of medical marijuana. Yes, sir. And that's, that's this, sat- this, this, Saturday. Saturday. this Saturday. This Saturday. And where do we find out more information about the trivia night? You go to project-22.org, right. and there's a link right to it at the top of the page. It'll we're, take we're, you right also, to it. we're also going to have a dance. Um, I dance. No, I'm not called. dancing with you. <laughs> oh, come on. I'm not a dancer. <laughs> I'm a lover. I'm a talker. I'm not a dancer. I can't imagine. All that. right. Now, we also say that um, you're trying, Normal is trying to put the medical marijuana back on the ballot for two, two years from now? For two years from now. And it's not normal. Normal's supporting it. Okay. Um, it's New Approach Missouri is the group I work with. I'm the volunteer coordinator with them for St. Louis. Um, and they just kicked off, well, I kicked off into the training at Schlafly here in the Bottle Works room on Monday. We kicked off the uh, the petition gathering for St. Louis. Got it. And we're getting ready to do it again. In four months last time, we got 285,000 signatures, 23 short. Right. We've got 18 months this time. We plan to turn in a whole lot more and make sure it's on the ballot for And I would recommend that if you are signing the uh, petition, make sure you sign the right county. Yes, sir. It's very if, important. If you sir. live in the city, sign the city one. In St. Louis County, sign the St. Louis County one. Give me the St. Charles County one. I'll sign that here on the break. 925, it. Big 550 KTRS, project dash 22 Dot O-R-G. Gentlemen, Blake Bell, thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. And uh, Thomas Mundell, thank you for your service. You have thank nothing you. to be ashamed of. Thank you for being honest and telling us your story. You're always welcome here. Thank you, sir. It is 925, Big 550.